And we're back with a ship taking off, a Gungan dangling from it, and a rolling barrel, barrel full of fire about to make things even more chaotic in the hangar bay. Welcome to Let's Play. I'm Kit. I am your GM. I am not your host. Your host is not here. Again, I am joined by Winter, Morath, and Time Knight. And we are going to be continuing on this big old fight as the ship with the special hyperdrive on it is being stolen by what appears to be a group full of mercenaries. Mm. So, when last we had, uh, our last action was for the hangar bay doors to start their closing cycle. Um, Time Knight, you had to go ahead and slice the computer to make sure that it didn't throw any safety flags. Um, you may notice that it's not closing as fast as you might want it to. Brass, you yeah. might notice that too. You also might notice that you are about 20 feet above deck and hanging on for dear life to the emergency handle of the ship's uh, hatch. So, uh, Winter. Yeah. What does Brass do? Uh, didn't you say there's like a console he could try to turn the ship off with? Well, what I said is there's a emergency handle that you can try and use to over manually override the hatch so you can get in. Okay. Uh, you are currently using that as your way to stay up in, you know, attached to the ship. Hmm. So you can either try and manually blow the hatch or you can try and fall and not die. It's your call. Uh, I think I'm just going to try to blow... Just hang on and go out into space. That's also an option. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just going to have to try to blow the hatch. I, I'm not going to risk falling to certain Gungan splats. It's not certain. It's likely. It's pretty not likely. Certain. But yeah. So... Okay, um, so you're going to go ahead and try and... You know, get off the ship. Uh, sorry, get into the ship. Yeah. <laughs> the okay, go ahead saying. and roll me mechanical, and you may use your uh, ship skill with this one, as it is, in fact, your ship. And I'm still at that penalty, so... Yes, you are. And I, this is not, like you say, uh, might think, easy hanging off the bottom of a ship and doing this. I'm just saying that it's possible. Yeah. So, 2D plus 1. Let's... <laughs> Let's see. Five. Five. Um, it's a damn shame that you can't get the leverage that you really need to go ahead and crank this emergency handle. I mean, it, it has to be difficult to do, or else it might happen, you know, just randomly, in which case you've got a decompression hazard. Yeah. But uh, right about this time, you're wishing that the spring wasn't quite so stiff. Yep. But you are ratcheting it, and you are making headway on the emergency pump, but uh, it hasn't opened yet. And the ship is getting closer to the MagCon field. And as it gets closer, you're starting to feel the air get colder and colder. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, uh, Morath. Yes. Luna is currently lying on the ground, having been hit uh, pretty hard upside the head by one of the sting balls. However, she did get off a very large thing that she needs to deal with, wouldn't you say? You mean the fact that I want to change the barometric pressure under uh, in an artificial atmosphere directly below a spacecraft? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, roll 1d6. Tell me what it comes up with. One. Oh, oh damn. Okay, so... Oopsies. What we had established earlier, though, um... Galena may easily be excused for not remembering it, is that Time Knight, uh, as Chalk, had gone ahead and just messed with all the different little slidey panels and blast shields and such in the hangar. It made it difficult to go ahead and get this drum all the way to the ship. 
Now, one of the things that Time Knight did when he messed with that was he went ahead and exposed the crawl spaces under the hangar. Oh, this isn't going to end well at all. It may or may not. You don't know. Um, but probably not. <clears throat> and you see, the barrel just dropped into the crawl spaces, and it continued onwards. And he did a very good job of measuring that flare fuse. So as it trundles through the crawl spaces, it goes off under the landing ship, but not directly under it. And a flood of flaming lubricant is now burning through the crawl spaces under the hangar deck. Well, there was an them we get. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a very good thing. Poor cleaning droids. Yeah. Oh, no. It's... And you mentioned how you wanted to change the barometric pressure there, uh, Morathia. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which granted that magicon field looks to be flickering. It could be a, just a trick of your eyes. After all, it's difficult in this dark hangar that has a bunch of klaxons and sirens and lights that are flashing going off. But you could swear it's not just a trick of the eyes. The ring around the empty space towards space, it's starting to fizzle. And it had absolutely no effect, effect on the flying thing? Well, not yet. I mean, I'm sure that once it actually goes ahead and fails, they'll have quite a brush of air to deal with. But it hasn't failed yet. Fun. You do hear cursing from up in the catwalks. Very loud cursing. And scrambling sounds as they head away from you. So, we are going to then move up to the control room. Oh boy. Oh boy, I think I bungled this one. Huh? Who says that? I mean, the fact that you're trying to close the hangar bay doors is probably not a bad thing. I mean, it's about to happen. Yeah. Because from your vantage point, you can tell that yes, the Magcon shield is going to go down. Oh, yeah. Um, is there some way that I could speed things up? Like just turn off the Magcon's uh, shield? I mean, mean, I mean the door's closing. Oh, like how, oh yeah, yeah. What are, what... No, in fact, what readings that you're getting suggest that they're already encountering resistance. But they're not touching anything. And there's also a note about the motors overheating. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, hold on, let's see here. That's weird. Um, Jebba from behind you, uh, Pong's daughter, goes, That's weird? That's weird? Your friend just set the, just set the hangar on fire. And you think that's weird? Not, not, not that. It's just... The... The, the hangar bay door is acting like it's hitting something, but nothing is actually there. It's it's like just a, just a few, just a little bit away from. That's probably the overheat on the on the uh, the motors. Hmm. 
that doesn't ring true to you. He was doing this before the overheat came up. Yeah, I'm think. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I'm going to use a sense force. Yeah, go for it. Okay, let's see. That's just one D. Oh boy, let's hope. Go for it. Um, that's a two. Okay. No. You're not for certain, but uh, the force is being drawn upon in your vicinity. Uh, that could be your Jedi, whatever they're doing since they got on the ship. That could be Galena. But it means. Okay, some. Okay, uh. All right. Am I. Am I allowed to do something else? Yeah, if you can think of something. Okay, I'm. Okay, um. Dang, I need. I'm trying to think of something. I mean, my, my gut instinct right now is to stop is to stop the um, door from closing, but that just puts us back at square one, and and the magnetron field is failing. Yeah. Um, I, I should note also, by the way, that the fire appears to be... Uh, the overheat is almost certainly the same thing that's making the magcon fail. So you may lose the hangar doors as well as the magcon field. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I'm. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna. I'm. I think I'm just going to. Um. Stop the. Um. The doors from closing. Okay. Um. You go ahead and you cancel the command for the doors to close. The motors are still heating up, but uh, they are no longer pushing against that whatever it is. And they're not heating up quite as fast because of that. Okay. Okay, so, Brass. Yeah? What do? Um, is, why am I forgetting Jared's character's name? Rosa? Yeah, is... Did you say that Rosa was on the ship? Rosa did get onto the ship. I'm going to try to radio Rosa and say, Could you open the door? I'm a little stuck. You don't get a response. That the hatch does open. Oh, God. Well, I... It... It's either vacuum of space or fight whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go inside. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll me a dexterity to swing yourself in. 2D plus 1. Oh, my wild die. My other die was a 1, but my wild die was a 6. So I got really scared. 10. Okay. Yeah, you swing yourself into there, and um, you very quickly assess the situation. The interior hatch is still closed, and standing in front of you is one of the oldest-looking droids that you've ever seen. This guy is pitted, he is scorched, he is rusted, just no streamlining whatsoever. One of his photoreceptors is dim, and he's just staring at you. Please, sir, it is not safe to be here. Well, he's right. see, they're... Well, I can't exactly leave now. Uh, do you try and dodge? Yeah. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll me a dodge. Um, also, quickly, through the interior hatch uh, viewport, you can see that Rosa's lightsaber is ignited, and he is inside the ship. 
Well, that's comforting. At least a little. Five to dodge. Not gonna be enough. The droid goes ahead, grabs you by the throat, and pulls something out from behind its back. And swipes it at you. You are in danger. He can he use his electro pole to try to block it? You can try. Alright. So Um, oh, that's a lot better. Okay. 18. 18, okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover what happens shortly. Yeah. Galena. Mm-hmm. What do? You have uh, gone ahead and shook off your incapacity. Well... Uh, every time I roll the dice, something bad happens, so... Nonsense. Just, like, two-thirds of the time. No, every fucking time, kid. So, I'm just gonna drag the Rodian out of harm's way. And okay. into a... And into one of the hallway doors. Are you going to go ahead and close and shut the door? Yes, but not lock it. Okay. In case somebody needs to come in. But I do have my blaster and stun... Uh, my stun baton. Both, like, gun... Uh, like, stun baton, you, you know, police holster style with a flashlight. And, but instead of the flashlight, it's a stun baton. Right, right. Um, okay, so you go ahead, you grab Bez, and you book it back into there... And you go ahead and slap the door. Pong, you know, nearly gets his gun knocked out of his hand and, and roars at you. What are you doing? Getting the injured away. But they're getting away. I'll be back to securing the wounded. Okay, uh, as you say that, the a red light appears on the door panel as the MagCon field fails. Oh, God. So, Brass, remember how I said that we'd uh, go ahead and adjudicate what happened to you? Yeah. As you go ahead and block with the pole, you're able to stop his wrist, but whatever he was going ahead and flicking at you, unfolds all around you. That's probably a good thing, too, because as it closes in front of your face, suddenly it goes very, very taut. It goes very what? Very, very taut. 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 The, oh, the, uh, okay. You're in a bubble. Inside the bubble, there's a supply of oxygen and other breathable mixed gases. There is a distress beacon. And there is your pole, which is currently straining at the uh, synth plastic wrapping that uh, makes up this bubble. Outside, there's not very much at all. You can see a little light flickering in uh, the vocoder of the droid, but you can't hear anything. And it's maneuvering your bubble towards the open hatch. Oh, no. Well, I can't have this happen because I don't want to die, so uh, try to pop the bubble. You don't want to die, so you're going to try and pop the bubble. I mean, it's like, well, I guess it yeah, does have so. oxygen and it's a bubble, so I will be safe. I don't want to be thrown into the vacuum space with it. Well, I guess I'm pretty much in a life pod, so I'm probably one of the more safer people in this bubble. That's probably a pretty good bet. Yeah, I think I'll just... I'll... I don't want to... Yeah, I'll stay in the bubble, and I'll just... I'll just kind of sit and let it happen. 
Can't okay. do much. So you're not going to pop the bubble. Yeah. Okay. Bubble, we'll see. The droid pushes the bubble out into space, and at this point, you can see that uh, you actually are in open space at this point. You are past the edge of the hangar. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also see that there's a big old rush of air coming out of the hangar. There's crystallizing gases just floofing out of there. I mean, and yeah. you can further see that there is a larger bulk freighter that um, your ship is now heading towards. And it looks like the landing craft is backing out, being tumbled along the deck, um, and appears to be trying to right itself to fly towards that ship. So, Brass, you are currently floating in space. Uh, the distress beacon appears to be activated. Yeah, I was going to activate it myself, but it wasn't, so I'm fine with that. So we will now move... Chuck. Uh, okay, Chuck. so I've seen this. I've seen yeah, that. you see this. Uh, you I've see my buddy oh, flying out of the face. Another thing that uh, Winter, that rests, is a bunch of people in those, like, faceless uh, jumpsuits and such, mm -hmm. the armor, flying out into space as well. They don't appear to be completely panicked, as, you know, they're in pressure suits, but... They're not happy. I'm sure. They would be. Yeah. But yes, um, Chuck, what do? A oh. distress beacon has just gone on out, uh, outside. There is an immediate loss of pressure in the hangar, and you can't see what's going on there because of that. There's entirely too much chaos going on, along with that which you went ahead and uh, made yourself. And the your, both your ship and the enemy landing craft um, are now outside in free space above the uh, vacuum part of the landing platform. You do have some tractor beams, um, but you have too many targets, as it were. Okay, so how many targets can I get? You have two tractor beams. Okay. And how strong are are these tractor beams? You don't know. You know what? I'm going to try to use a tractor beam to bring bring a, a brass back, and okay. and I'll also try to use the other one to get to try to put some resistance on our ship. Okay. Um. Go ahead and roll me technical. Technical. Gotcha. That is technical 3D plus 2. So um, is there anything on my skills that I could use? No, you don't have it. Okay. Okay, gotcha then. 3D plus 2, right? Essentially what you're doing here is you're writing a quick program to actually run the tractor beam because you don't know how to run the tractor beam. <laughs> Okay, 3D. Okay, plus two. Okay, that's... Okay, I got uh, nine total. Okay. Um, you think that you knocked something together, and Jebba is at your side, and she's trying to run the other one. Uh, you are able to snag brass, and uh, brass, you can feel the bubble kind of go a little bit egg-shaped and head towards the, uh, well, the torrent of air, which is starting to subside. Yeah. Um, Your ship is also hit by a tractor beam, um, which is slowing it, but it is making uh, headway against it. Yeah. Looks like they did a bit too good of a job on those engines. I need to hit it a bit harder, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Brass, as you are currently in the bubble, yes. we will go ahead and come around to Galena. Uh, okay. The hangar has decompressed. You are on the other side of a 
pressure pipe door from it. That's what you yeah. need. And it's probably a very good thing that you got Vez out of there. He was unconscious. Of course it's a good idea. That's why I did it. <laughs> I, I didn't want to lose him. He's the only person that hasn't glared daggers at me or acted like a complete and utter moron in the face of danger. Well, I mean, he did follow you into a fight despite not being trained for a fight. So, so <laughs> and, and, so we'll add and on to that. Okay. <laughs> if Boolean logic is now satisfied. Go, uh, go yeah. on. So what is Boolean going to do? Uh, she's gonna pull out one of her medkits and start patching both herself and the Rodian up. Okay, um, are you going to start with yourself or with Vez? Uh, I'm gonna give a, uh, I'm gonna ta start with Vez. He probably okay. needs it more than I do. I'm ambulatory. <laughs> He's not, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and roll me first aid. All right. Is that at a penalty or is it only physical actions that are at a penalty? Oh, it's at a penalty. Mm. You, you right, so, may yeah. have a concussion at the moment. I mean, yeah, but I don't know. There's a penalty is what I'm saying. I know. Also, you're using a human med kit on a Rodian. It's not exactly best tools. Uh, not bad, though. A 12. 12, okay. Um, you're not able to get him up and about. You don't have the proper stimulants for it. But um, you're able to see that, yeah, he did take some damage, and you're able to go ahead, bandage it up, uh, make sure that it's not going to get knocked around worse. But Vez is out of this fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, I knew he would be. I just didn't want him to destabilize. <laughs> Assuming that this door doesn't blow as well, he'll be fine. Yeah. Or that, you know, someone comes here and decides to, like, murder all of you. But, uh, yeah. you know, he really can't plan for that circumstance. Okay. And should I roll one for myself as well? If you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, focus on medkit time. Yeah, I'm, I'm doubling down. Okay. Um, try and remove some penalties. Uh, that is a 17. 17. Okay. So you are able to go ahead and give yourself some stims um, that are going to take the edge off. You will lose one pip of penalty. Um, that being said, if you continue to try and you know physically push yourself, you are almost certain to injure yourself and not notice it and need some time in a proper med bay. Right. Well, essentially what I was m mostly doing is like, you know, uh, checking on my wounded limbs and also like uh, I mean, bandaging. The thing is, so is you haven't taken, with the exception of the sting ball to the temple, you haven't taken any serious injuries. Yeah. It's all been painful or stun damage, but no like real trauma. Uh, so basically, like a oh, I'll take an ibuprofen and some caffeine. Or, ca so or some. Or a little bit. You can take some combat stims right now, and your body is trying to tell you not to push it any further because you will yeah. injure yourself further. Right, and I would know that. So I'm not going to. At the moment, yeah. yeah, you can push through. <laughs> yeah. About the worst part Basically, of this, again was the sting ball to the temple. Like I said, you may have a concussion. Yeah. And you don't have drugs for that. No. They don't come in a standard med kit. Civilian issue. <sighs> anyway. So you're just going to go ahead and... Um... I'm not going to open the door, kid. No. <laughs> but you're going to go ahead and take your time with uh, medicine. Okay. So then we are going to come back up to... Time Knights.
Oh boy. You're in the control room and you have retrieved Brass. He is now at the uh, tractor beam projector, which is still in hard vacuum, but he's not floating out free. So that's good. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep the keep the tractor beam on him. Okay. So he's still kind of just floating there mm -hmm. until yeah. I can figure out something I could can do to repair the or do something to. Okay, the uh, the um, the the shuttle that the shuttle that was um, in in the way of the. Yeah, the landing craft. Landing craft is gone, right? The landing craft is still floating out there. You don't have a tractor beam on it, um, but it's looking rather worse for wear uh, after being thrown against the deck in the outpouring of air. It is still apparently flightworthy, though, as it's starting to straighten itself. Um, and it appears that the pilot seems to be shaking off uh, their wild ride. They're not doing anything yet, but they very well might be. Also, your ship is uh, straining at the tractor beam that Jebba is currently running. Um, and she looks over at you. I can't keep it here. It's going to get away unless you've got a plan. I'm... I don't think I have any any plans the best thing that i the best thing i can do is is tell you to release release the tractor beam and close the doors she you have a second you in absolute astonishment well we can close the doors sure but why do you want the ship to get away you, you can you you can have a second tractor beam. You can just lock onto it. Well, she's running that second tractor beam. No, he has his tractor beam. They've already gotten the person. Yeah, they've already got brass I, to safety. Yeah, so, but if I, if I operate, if I... Brass is already in the tractor beam, so all you have to do is extend it past him, use that firing position from the, origin, from the already existing tractor beam lock, get both of them, and hold, the, hold it in position. It can't get away from two tractor beams. It's not that big of a ship. You would certainly hope so. Um, also, I should note, uh, Time Knight, that your character do, is not a licensed tractor beam operator. They do not know what would happen. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, I don't have, to be honest, I don't really have any ideas if you, can't think of anything. Uh, well, you can call out to other characters if you want, but it's going to need to be actually RP'd here. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. You want to close the hangar doors, though? I mean, you could do that. Um, that would bring brass back inside, and you could try and repressurize the hangar. Yeah. That that is that is something that I definitely want to do. Okay. Um, the doors are moving slowly, but they are moving. Uh, thankfully, they are no, there is no longer a fire there. One of the rather essential ingredients to a fire being gone. Yeah. Brass, you can see from inside your bubble that your beautiful ship is getting away and the doors are closing. No. He, he can't do anything, so he's just kind of sitting there trying to to accept it, though it's hard. All right. Uh, Galena, you are now patching yourself up. You can see that the hangar bay doors are closed. You can see that through the uh, viewport of the hatch. Sit rep. The two of you both hear that through your comm links. Okay. Uh, the Star Seeker's gone. Hold on. Nope. It, it isn't yet. It is still 
we still have it sort of in the in in, in a tractor beam. We we can. I'm just trying to figure. Just trying to focus. So see if I can lock another tractor onto it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, just look. If it has one, if you have one, then just lock a second tractor beam onto it using the original one's firing position. It's like artillery bombardment, except with uh, magnetism. Okay. Yeah, okay. Shock, you... that sentence made no sense whatsoever to you. <laughs> that really didn't to brass either. But, but it is you... an open broadcast, so there are people listening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Games, how do they work? You know, you, you know, you you could have just you 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 could have been you might as well have been been uh speaking Wookie because that just kind of went went point through. the one thing where the other thing is pointing. You understood that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have to say it like, you know, they say it like that. It just seems okay. Look, when we have time to like go over the specifics, we'll start. Te I'll start trying to relay, tell you how my mind works. Until then, I have to dumb it down as simple as possible so you get it as quick as possible. Now do it. Okay, fine. Okay, all right. If, if that's the way you're going to be about it, I'll do it. I'll see if I can use one of Pong's ships to make it out there and get it back. No, no, you're 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 staying right, right where you are, Bubble Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you say that, you are now looking at uh, the tractor beam controls and going, hmm. Can I write a program to do what uh, Galena wants me to do? Uh, or so, uh, try and do the, this manual. Um, let's see. What? Okay. Okay. I, I'm guessing. I don't know. Okay, what would I need to use to do this manually versus the tractor beam controls? Uh, you would be using mechanical for that. Mechanical, and I don't have. <laughs> You're using mechanical for that. Okay, so this is going to be the um, 2D plus 2 versus 3D plus 2. Well, I'm going to go with the most Ds, so. <laughs> I'm going to try to write a program, because that sounds like a lot closer to more of something that I would know how to do. It is the higher target number, but yes, that is in character for you. So I'll do that. Okay, 3D plus 2. Here we go. Okay, that is... a 12. Oh. You don't know if it's really locked on, but it's pointing in the right direction. That's what Galena said, right? Right. Well, it, it's doing something. The ship's not getting away as fast. Okay. I've, I've pointed the thing at the other thing. What do? Uh, is it locked properly? Looks close enough. Is there somebody there that knows how to operate it um, a, uh, a little bit? like more familiar with the mechanisms yeah but um she's currently ah, how are you how are you at at um operating two tractor beams at the same time well i don't know if i have enough hands says jebba <laughs> spreading you know like seven other hands <laughs> <laughs> but i can try if you know how to do this better than I do, then... Hey, look, you're good with computers, yeah? I'm good with the computers. I'm just not good yeah. with 
Can you see? Can you can you manipulate the power grid? Maybe give those things a little bit of extra power. Not too much because you don't want to blow them. Um, uh, it's worth a try. Could you get into my ship's console? Probably not. No, no it's too far away. I can't unless I unless I wanted to go for a spacewalk. <laughs> Here, come take my bottle. <laughs> when you say, unless I wanted to go for a spacewalk, Jeppa says, well, we do have some pressure suits that might be in your size. Well. Also, Brass, you can tell that uh, there's starting to be some atmosphere in the hangar that you're in. The doors have now completely closed. Uh, pop the bubble. You're gonna pop the bubble right now. I, well, no, it's only some atmosphere. No, that I don't want to choke. It's gonna wait a little bit more, but he's he's trying to come up with plans at this point, so he doesn't need to run around yet. So soon, he will be free of the bubble. Okay, uh, Galena. You've been talking into your comm link. Vez is unconscious on the floor. Pong is looking at you as uh, you try and break it down Barney style how to go ahead and use a uh, tractor beam projector. <laughs> um, so, so I'm looking at Pong, right? Mm -hmm. Is Pong, what, what look is on Pong's face at the moment? You don't know entirely. He's a basilisk. You're not used to reading them. Right. Um, so, Glade is probably going to assume that due to the recent thing that, that, that he's displeased that I didn't let his crew member die to save my own ship for some fuck-off reason. Um... So she is going to. Uh, is Pong like in a safe space? Is somewhere safe? Oh, I mean, he's. Oh, are you about to punch him out? No, I'm asking if he's safe. Or yeah, he's in the room with us? Safe. He's with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Look, all right. So once we get that done, we'll retrieve. Uh, if we can, if we can get it locked on proper, we can go out and retrieve it. Um, using. Uh, through a uh, using some grappling hooks and some pressure suits. Why don't you just use the swoops? Because I didn't know there were swoops. But uh, thank you for that now. Yes, swoops. What's a swoop? You seriously don't know what the, that is. Um, in case it hasn't hit anybody yet, I don't know a lot about this area of the galaxy. They, they don't have... <laughs> Pong just shakes his head. Swoops are all over the galaxy. I assume we have something similar, just we don't use that word for them. Where are you from? Hapes. Ah, I see the problem. Swoops are all over the galaxy, except for Prissy Girl, girl Area Hapes. Right. And also, but I spent a, the last four years on Dathomir. So, quickly, explain a swoop. Okay, big hover bike. Uh, it's a, it's basically a hover bike. It's um, a like speed of oh. bike, but not boring. Oh. Okay, yeah, I can fly one of those. Yay for ground vehicles. Anyway. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it might take some adjustment period, but I think I can figure it out. So we'll use those then. Come on, let's see if we can't find your pressure suit. The uh, light winks off on the door for the pressure alarm, and brass... You're not so much in a bubble at this point as kind of a, a tarp over you. Yeah, now it's gone. Just... 
you are able to open the door and come in at this point. Let's let's leave this area. Hmm. Okay, so um, Galena, I assume that you're going to try and uh, get the ship with the swoops after getting a pressure suit. Um, are the other two on board with this plan? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm going to ask if they have any um, uh, anchor cables in case we need to anchor it to the station itself in order to prevent it from flying away. Well, yeah, but I don't know if they're long enough. Huh, fair enough. Well, I guess we might want to take at least one with us and just see if it'll work. If you like. All right. Uh, I'm going to start looking for a pressure suit. I've worn one before, but it's been quite some time. Yeah, uh, they are also a different model than you're used to. Um, yes. As he sees that you're inexperienced with it, he, you know, bats your hands away and starts actually suiting you up. Yeah, Brass knows enough about a pressure suit to put it on properly. Not much more. Yeah, no, being a galactic explorer, you've probably used them fairly recently. It's a shame that you're, you know, personal one is not with you anymore, but... Yeah. So, Chuck, what are you doing? Okay, so... So, let, let, let me just kind of get on board with what... Just confirm what our plan is. Uh, so, the plan is we are putting on pressure suits and using the swoops to get to the ship. And then, then what are we doing? Boarding said ship, taking said ship back, and uh, saving a Jedi in the process. He was still awake when they, they were leaving, so he's probably... I mean, he is a Jedi. He probably can... Hold his own if they're fighting. They were expecting a Jedi. Yeah, that's fair. In mm, case the fact that I was thrown clear across the room without any provocation what, what, wasn't thing enough, somebody, somebody was a force sensitive on that ship. Probably, I... pro probably some sort of new kind of, or, or some sort of like, I, I think we somebody referred to them as Sith or something. But anyway, they were on one of the vessels. And we don't know exactly who that is. I think we should not worry about that until we get the ship back. Ship yeah, is they're... number one priority. Unless they're still on the ship. They wouldn't be no. on my ship then, and let's say we're already on it. It's been in space the entire time. Oh, I think well, no, that's what I mean. They could have been one of the people who was boarding. We don't know who was doing it. I, I have a feeling that the the force user was, uh, on on the shuttle. Hmm. It would make sense keep somebody with that kind of tactical advantage. In a place where they would be tactically safe, although we can't, we also can't work under the assumption that that is the only one. And they had some sort of really old robot with them. That was the one that put me in the bubble. Well, well, okay. If if the enemy put you in the bubble, this could easily mean that that uh. And they were that, always on stun, so they're not trying to kill us. Which yeah, means they, they're either directly after the ship or after the, after the information it contains. I'm not sure which is scarier. Uh, currently, the information and the, you know, currently living Jedi on port. Yeah. That, that is a fair point. 
Okay, I'm on board with this plan. Let's go. Yeah. Alright, so... Hey, as you say that, and I'm assuming that you're heading out the door? Yeah. No, no, yeah. I, I mean, uh, Chuck, I assume you're heading out of the door of the control room as you say that? Yes. Okay, uh, Jebba calls back over his shoulder. Just make sure to put something on. I don't want you catching cold. That would be very wise. <laughs> yeah, this is cold. cold. You're the person who's <laughs> most likely to be able to survive uh, being tossed out into vacuum, but still not a great idea. Yeah, yeah you can spend 30 minutes in vacuum, but it might take longer than that, and also you do suffer bad side effects. Yeah, I'm going to just put... I'm going to find... I'll, I'll see if I can find one of those pressure suits, put that one of those on. Yeah. Um, if you make your way back to the other two, uh, they've got one ready for you. Okay. There's okay. also um, a smaller hangar bay nearby with um, some swoops in it. Um, Pong is cursing at the moment. His pressure suit has a hole in it. Um, uh, apparently something went wrong and uh, he's not going to be able to join you. The swoops, um, like Pong said, they're like speeder bikes, but not boring. His definition of not boring is no safety features and an incredibly big engine. Oh, military hardware. You would probably not assume that. Uh, they are not armed. Um, that, that, that is a joke. They are not armed. <laughs> yeah. They go. And, um... Galena, you've established that uh, you've used a speeder bike before. Um, an, a, a vehicle a lot like a speed, a, a, a lot like a speeder bike that mm -hmm. Hapes has. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, my yeah. point is that you would know that normally speeder bikes require the use of repulsors and just depend on uh, their main engine for thrust, and all maneuvering is done with either airfoil systems or repulsors. Mm-hmm. There is one small problem with what you're about to be doing. Oh. Are the repulsors? Well, there are repulsors. But what are they going to repulse off of? Bingo. Oh. And there are airfoil systems. There's but there is no air out there. So, um... That's a... One question. Just yeah. minor inconvenience. Uh, how are we supposed to move these things in space? Ah. Right. Uh, so the main engines, they still work. Mm -hmm. And pretty much you're going to need to muscle them around and, you know, throw your weight around to get them on the right vector that you want, and then you thrust. And I would probably going to drift some because any vector you put on them is going to stay on them. All right. You have any uh, mag lines? What do you think? Well, uh, I don't want to crash your gorgeous vehicle into... Oh, so I figured we can just attach it with a mag line, string onto it with that, uh, attach the two, and then uh, bring it in safely. Oh. Yeah, I guess you could do that. Just wouldn't want you to get all tangled up in them, but... It, there's going to be some tumbling. Mm. Yeah. Well, what about, um... Do you have any way that we could fire them off of the thing? Like, uh... Hydraulic? <laughs> <laughs> hydraulic. You can say hydraulic. No, no, I got this. He unfolds something from the deck. Those of you with any knowledge of ship design may un uh, recognize a very large repulsor. With a rail that uh, is built into the deck and has a little bit of play and movement in it. This here is what I use for a catapult. Um, somebody with some sort of knowledge on how these things work. Um, explain how I fire it and then hand it to me. No, no. This is like a crew served thing. He's going to shoot you out towards the ship. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This, this seems like he's very catapults. <laughs> a 
catapult of us. I see. Okay. It repulses you. <laughs> this seems very ill-advised. Oh, but... no sense. Hardly ever break a bone. You may uh, notice when looking at a Thessalisk that they are very thickly built. <laughs> they probably have bigger bones than any of the three of you do. Maybe even combined. <laughs> that might be overstating it by a little bit. <laughs> mm. All well, right. Let's do this. Uh, don't I don't think really we have any other options. <laughs> he starts attaching two other rails. Yeah, just back them on there, get on there, and I'll shoot you off into space. All right. Fun. That's uh, not something that I thought I would be doing today. All right. Ain't it exciting? So I'm going to pull out my synth cord. Uh huh. And uh, be like, all right, so. I want everybody to have slack and attach it all to me. And I should be the one to grab onto the vessel. All right. Okay. You can do that. Um, just one more equipment thing. Do you have any mag grips? Um. Yeah, there, there's some basic ones in the palms of those suits. Ah. Well, that's handy. And if you need some range, I have my gyro... My, my gyro grappler. That can... Oh. That could work very well. Alright. Looks like we're ready. Ish. Uh, ready and all well, for this thing. Ready as right. ever be. He hits the button, and we will pick up next time. Bum 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 bum.